Welcome back students. This is Brandon here for the fourth video in Belmont's lecture series for this prerequisite math concepts for your pharmacy program. Uh, I hinted in the last video that the subject of this one is going to be about dimensional analysis. So what is it? Why is it useful? How do we use it? All those kinds of things. That's what we're going to cover in the this video and the next. So let us go ahead and get started. Before we go into dimensional analysis itself, let's do a problem just kind of reviewing what we did in the second video with proportional equations and all those kinds of things. So let's say we wanted to figure out how many minutes are in three hours. So obviously we know that they, in each hour, there are going to be 60 minutes. So we have that frequency all ready to go, which means we can set up a rate or a proportion, however you want to look at it, of 60 minutes divided by one hour. And using the knowledge that we picked up in that second video, we want to say, well, now what about three hours? What happens in that three hours? So we can set up this kind of proportional equation where again, we'll have minutes on top and hours on bottom so that it matches our first proportion. And we know we want exactly three hours. So we're gonna fill in three on bottom and we don't know what's going to be on top. That's the number that we're going to be solving for. Um, so you can put in the question mark or you can put in X, obviously take out of the classes, you should put in X just to kind of be a placeholder there. And then you can cross multiply and solve like normal. So 60 times 3, x times 1. So that's going to leave us with 180 is equal to x. So our answer is going to be, of course, 180 and then the unit that we are looking at. So 180 minutes is our answer. Let's do one more example, kind of extend it a little. So now let's say we wanted to know how many seconds are in four hours. So we could think about how many seconds are gonna be in one hour, but an easier way or a more intuitive way is to go from hours to minutes and then minutes to seconds. So what we're gonna have to do is basically do this kind of proportional equation thing twice, once to get to minutes, other to get to seconds. So first idea is go to minutes. So we're gonna to have to use 60 minutes is equal to one hour. And so we're gonna have 60 minutes over one hour is equal to Four hours is going to be on bottom so that hours matches up and then whatever however many minutes we're going to end up looking and so we can cross multiply and get that 60 times 4 or 240 is equal to x so that's going to be the number of minutes in those four hours remember that's not our answer right because we are looking for seconds. So we need to do this again. So how many seconds are in any particular minute? Well, that's going to be 60 again. So 60 seconds is equal to one minute. And then we can set up that same kind of proportional equation. So here we're going to have 60 seconds and one minute is going to be, well, we know we have 240 minutes by our previous um, formula, previous equation. And we wanna know how many seconds we have. And we just cross multiply again. And we get that 60 times 240, which is 14,400 is going to be X. So in this case, our answer is 14,400.
And of course, we can continue this even if there were three transitions, right? If there were seconds to days or whatever, or days to seconds, I guess, if we're continuing in that track. Or maybe months to seconds, all those kinds of things. But each time, we're going to add another layer of proportional equations, which gets time consuming after a while. So an alternate way of accomplishing the same thing is to use what's called dimensional analysis. And so let's go over kind of what that really entails. Honestly, a lot of the same techniques we used before are gonna come in handy now, but rather than setting it up as an equation, we're really gonna be setting it up as a multiplication problem. So here's what I mean. Let's say we have some number or let's say we have three fourths, three fourths. We have a fraction three fourths. Now, if we were to multiply by one over one, then nothing happens, right? We're just multiplying by one and multiplying by one never changes anything. Three over four times one over one is three fourths. Now, let's say that this was three fourths of an hour, right? So then, if we wanted to figure out how many minutes are in three fourths of an hour, what we're going to end up doing, let's just multiply by an hour, like one hour over one hour, right? Those are still the same thing. So it's still going to not change anything. But what we can do, remember, 60 minutes is the same as one hour. So rather than write one hour on top, replace that with 60 minutes. And we're still multiplying by one, right? Because those two things are equivalent. So nothing is changing. We're just kind of putting it in a different reference space. We're putting it in minutes rather than hours. And what that allows us to do, notice that hours is kind of on top here, and we've have an hours on bottom over here. So those are gonna end up kind of canceling out and the only thing we have left is minutes. And so we have three fourths times 60, and that's just 45. And we still have minutes there, right? The minutes didn't cancel. So it's just gonna stay there. And that's dimensional analysis in a nutshell is basically figuring out all of these different rates that you can kind of multiply together, cancel some of the units out, and end up exactly right. So let's do those few examples now in this kind of dimensional analysis, uh, kind of headspace, just to see how this is going to work. So the first one was how many minutes are in three hours? So we're starting out in hours, right? That's where we're currently in. We want to get to minutes. That's our answer is going to be in terms of minutes. So we are starting out with three hours. And we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we can use that rate. And we make sure to put whatever's here that we don't want on bottom so that they kind of cancel out. Sometimes we'll need to flip that rate, the one hour over 60 minutes. If we're in minutes going to hours, we just flip it and we're good because that's gonna end up canceling that. So here, hours cancel, we're now in minutes, three times 60, that's 180 minutes, just like we had before. Let's do that second example. So let's say we have number, we want the number of seconds, four hours. So again, we're starting at hours and going to seconds. So we start with four hours, kind of just on top, it's just there. Remember, we have the 60 minutes is an hour, 60 seconds is a minute. We can do all of that now in one step. So first convert it to minutes, right? We're just gonna kind of take a detour to minutes and then go to seconds. So we have one hour on bottom so that the hours are gonna cancel. And 16 minutes on top, because those are, that's the equivalent. 
and notice that the hours will cancel. But now we're in minutes, we're not where we want to be. So we do another step, another ratio, or another rate here, where we have 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Now the minutes cancel. And notice we are now in seconds, which is where we want to be. So we are good. We can just now multiply everything out. Remember, multiplying with fractions, you just multiply tops, multiply bottoms. Here, it's gonna be easy because we just have one on bottom. We've got four times 60 times 60. And what do you know? That's gonna get us to 14,400 seconds. We've taken that process that normally would consist of two different uh, proportional equations and then basically translated it into one multiplication problem. Now let's see how it would be if we did it in reverse. Let's say we had hour, or we had seconds and wanted to go to hours. So we want to go seconds to hours. Um, and let's say we had, we'll go with 100,000 seconds just for fun. So we want to know how many hours is 100,000 seconds. So that is where we are starting our journey. We're starting in seconds. We want to go to hours. And so currently, just based off of you know basic knowledge, we can go to minutes and then go to hours, right? So we're going to go seconds to minutes, minutes to hours. Doesn't require too much thinking on our part of going straight from seconds to hours. Of course, if you know that fact, go ahead and use it. But most of us, we can just go to minutes and go to hours and it's not gonna to be too much of an issue. So let's do that. So we're starting out in seconds. So we have 100,000 seconds. We know there are 60 seconds in a minute, but now we are in the second zone, right? So we want seconds to be on bottom so that it cancels. So we are going seconds to minutes. There are 60 seconds in one minute and it's the 60 is now on bottom. And we are now in minutes, right? The seconds are going to cancel. We are now in the realm of minutes. And then we do it again, right? So going to hours, 60 minutes in an hour. Again, cancels. And we are in that correct pencil. So we are now in the hours like we want. And so now, it's just gonna be 100,000 divided by 60 divided by 60. Or if you want, think about it as multiply tops, so it's just 100,000, divided by multiply bottoms, 60 times 60, or 3,600. So 100,000 divided by 3,600, which is going to be around 27.8. hours. How many hours? Right, 100,000 seconds. And we just set it up in this one multiplication problem. Now, this is a really good way of kind of remembering oh, when do I multiply by 60? When do I divide by 60? I remember back when, we, when I started learning unit conversions, it's like, oh, just multiply it by 60. It's like, or just, oh, divide it by 60. It's always hard to remember which one of those do I need to do. Well, here, you visually can see which one needs to be on top and which one needs to be on bottom, because you know that the units themselves need to cancel out nicely. And that's the important thing there. Let's do one more example. So let's suppose that we are given, that we are going 50 kilometers per hour. We're driving, we're going 50 kilometers, one hour. Oh, okay. And we want to convert that into miles per minute. Whatever, maybe we need, maybe we just understand miles better, maybe we just need or understand minutes better. We just want to convert that from 50 kilometers an hour 
to miles per minute. So notice we've got kind of two transitions here, right? We've got the 50, uh, the kilometers to the miles, and we've got the hours to the minutes. So we can kind, we could kind of do it separately in the proportional equation kind of sense and do like focus on the kilometers to miles and then focus on the hours to minutes. With dimensional analysis, you can do it all at the same time. So let's say we're given that one mile is 1.6 kilometers approximately. A little bit longer than that, but 1.6 is gonna be a good estimate for us. And of course we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. So we're starting in the kilometers to hour headspace. So just go ahead and write that. We've got 50 kilometers every hour. And then just think of it one at a time. Let's focus first on the distance, right? Kilometers to miles. Well, we have this equivalency, right? One mile is 1.6 kilometers. So what we can do is set that up. And we want kilometers to cancel out. So we're gonna put that on bottom and miles on top. And 1.6 goes with the kilometers, one goes with the miles. So. Notice the kilometers are gonna cancel. And now we are in miles. We have a miles, oh, didn't mean to do that. We are in miles, right? It's already up there. We don't need to worry about that transition anymore. But we now have to worry about the minutes to hour or hours to minutes. And so notice we've got hours on bottom. So to cancel out that hours, we actually need to put the number of hours on top and minutes on bottom because that's going to cancel out the hour. And there are 60 minutes in one hour. And now we have minutes on bottom, which is what we want. We got miles on top, we got minutes on bottom. And so now it's just a big multiplication problem. Multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and we're good. So we got 50 on top, 1.6 times 60 on bottom, that's 96. And then if you divide those, you're going to get around 0 0.52. And that's going to be, I should always put the units, miles per minute. Because we left with miles on top, it's on bottom. So that's going to be all right. And so that's another great use of dimensional analysis is when you've got those kind of complex units and kind of want to convert those, it's easy to see again, which one, how you need to multiply or divide. Because you know, visually, what unit has to go on top and what unit has to go on bottom. And it gets it. So that is your introduction to dimensional analysis. And we will cover some more problems uh, in the next video just to kind of see more uses of dimensional analysis. So look forward to that.